Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm Ben Dietrich, joined by Mr. Tom Smith. Hello, Tom. Hello. Welcome back. This is our oh, second. It's great, it's great to be back, man. I'm really excited. Got on my YouTube tartan. You um, got your YouTube yeah, tartan. Yeah, yeah. So I've got I'm, my. I'm ready, I'm ready to roll. I got the go-to denim shirt. I tried to do this thing once. You know, it's funny. I was thinking when we started doing building up our YouTube channel at the height of the pandemic last year, and I was thinking. You know, just for sake of just consistency, I'll just wear the same shirt every time uh, to make it easy. And, and I think, I think you shared that with. I think you shared that with me. And uh, so now this is this is my shirt, man. Yeah, I just uh, you know, did I'll it take it right one. to the dry cleaner after for the next time. You know, boom. Well, yeah, we're <laughs> we're in whiskey tasting in front of screens business. We're we're, we're, we're right. dressed up. So welcome everyone. This is uh, Tom and I are back again for the second time this month. I think we did we did a stream. Uh, together not that long ago and this is pretty exciting today because by the, you can as you can tell by the title itself we are going to be introducing the next bolts collection release uh, from the scotch and whiskey society which is actually set to drop in less than an hour so at 1 p.m eastern the cask will be available to members in the u.s we are doing what you could consider a last minute tasting i mean it's the 11th hour just before and uh, how are you feeling uh, about keeps, this one? Keeps it fresh, man. You know, yes. Yeah. I think it's kind of fun to uh, to to get the immediate feedback and then let that inform the uh, the the purchase decision. I guess I don't know, um, yeah. but uh, but yeah. I mean, I I think it's kind of cool. I mean, you know, the few minutes after this, we we we've had a few sips of whiskey, so not too too much work gets done but that's okay we have a we have a long afternoon ahead of us <laughs> so this, yeah. this is just fine just fine with me for sure so just a quick welcome first of all brian bombstein first in the chat good to see you todd greenhouse hello good to see you as well daniel cleric can't wait for the reveal he says um i can't wait to taste it myself um, and brad brown says always a pleasure joining you both looking forward to my first time of smws 24.142 that was a hell of a whiskey. We were that pretty jealous right. about that one, and I'm glad. Yes, I'm glad you picked up a bottle yourself. Uh, and so, first of all, Jim Ransom, new member, great to be here. Great to have you, Jim. Welcome to the club. Welcome, welcome, Jim. This is a you can you can look forward to a, a long year and then, and then some of some pretty fantastic whiskey. And uh, let's let's kind of go into it first, guys. You know what we're going to do actually, and just to jump ahead, not too far, but we will be unveiling our our. our latest false collection release set to drop at 1 p.m. Eastern today. After that, though, we have also pulled out another false collection release that's currently available um, just to taste together, which we haven't done yet as well. I think I, we haven't featured this one on, on the stream on the channel here. So it'll be no, not yet. Like, not yet. Yeah. We, we had some time constraints, um, you know, leading up to its release. However, um, you know, just a, a quick mention of our YouTube tastings for the next uh, few months, you know, it looks like we'll be we'll be getting back uh, online quite a bit more frequently. Um, either you and you and me, Ben, or or Jenna and Zach, or maybe even all four of us. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, logistics have been a little tough during the pandemic, and that sometimes kept us from uh, getting the whiskeys in time to do a tasting like this. But we're, we're pretty well situated for the next few months, so. It's it's really uh, exciting to know that you know, we'll be able to deliver these uh, kinds of tastings a, a lot more frequently. Yeah, you guys have asked for more and more of these. Uh, sounds like it's helping you just in, in your own selection process uh, in, in terms of deciding which whiskeys are right for your palate. And we certainly don't mind them. It's a lot of fun to sort of break away from the day, get, get yeah. into the whiskey zone and taste a few here. Um, so that said, you know, just again, as you know, this is the unveiling and tasting of our latest Vaults Collection release. Just a quick note about the Vaults Collection. You know, I know we have some new members here. If you're not familiar with what it is, essentially the Vaults Collection, and oh, you got a little box. Oh, strategically not showing the, the bottle inside of it, but the Vaults Collection is uh, a hand selection of the rarest casks and, and really the finest casks within the society's warehouse. Uh, our warehouse is in Scotland, of course, uh, holding about 10,000 plus different casks that we've acquired from different distilleries around the world over the last, coming up on 40 years almost. Uh, and so each year we do handpick a, a small selection, designate those as sort of the finest and rarest of all the casts there. Uh, and they get, as Tom sort of, we'll, we'll show the box a bit more when we reveal the whiskey, but uh, they get a fancy, fancy wooden box, which I think is quite nice. And just a little bit of scripture inside of it. 
uh, as to what the whiskey is and the, and the tasting notes. And so, you know, the big thing I just, for me and Tom, we were talking about this just before we went live, uh, you, you know, for whiskey today is just growing in popularity, especially malt whiskey, especially aged malt whiskey. Uh, a lot of the vaults collection bottlings that we have are, are over 30 years old. And so it's just important to, to kind of just set the tone for the, as far as society members are concerned. You know, our mantra with the society is that whiskey is for enjoyment. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be shared. If, if, if you can as well, uh, you might you might find, unfortunately, with whiskey of this caliber, you know, specifically of this age and rarity, a lot of these these casks or or bottlings are going to collectors. Uh, we, we see them sometimes on auction, not necessarily ours, which is general Scotch whiskey of of, of this rarity. And so it's uh, within yeah. this what, what we've done to select the vaults collection bottlings is the same as with with any other cask that we release to society members. We go through the whole process with our tasting panel, tasting the different selections, judging the spirit on its own merits, uh, not really factoring in the distillery it came from or the rarity of the cask today. It's just only about the liquid itself. And so these truly are, you know, just from the tasting process alone, the best of the best in, in terms of, uh, I, I think, fineness of rarity and, and age for the most part. So. I just wanted to set that set that precedent because I know it's not every day one gets to taste you know whiskey of this age and rarity, and truly I think for a lot of us we've heard from society members they they will order a bottle or two and these are really sort of their special occasion whiskeys that they'll share with family members or enjoy themselves yeah. on, a, on sort of a holiday or a milestone, and uh, yeah that's so yeah well you know if you, if you can enjoy them on a Tuesday night. <laughs> but uh, or, you or, know, uh, what is it? Uh, or a Thursday, uh, Thursday morning for me? Or, or, yeah, Thursday, Thursday noon time. Yeah, yeah. that's fine too. Uh, but yeah, you you really uh, hit the nail on the head there, Ben. It's it's you know th these whiskeys, vaults collection, black label, core whiskeys. They're for enjoyment. You know, they're for enjoyment uh, with your with your friends and and amongst uh, other whiskey lovers and you know some folks who are interested. You know. So uh, it, it's very much about popping and enjoying as opposed to uh, the F word. Uh, I won't mention it here. Flipping. Uh. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, first of all, a, a lot more joining us today. Thank you for, for tuning in. We'll, we'll get to the whiskey in just a moment. Um, and so I, I guess just I would just pose a question to everybody in, in the chat. If you've had a chance to taste or order a Vaults Collection bottling before for yourself, uh, comment below. Tell us what you think. Tell wh which was it. What was your impression? Uh, <laughs> side question: What do you think of the fancy wood box? Is it pretty epic as I seem to think it is? Uh, while you're doing that, Tom, let's let's get to it. You got the bottle. I got a little sample here in my glass. So yeah. What do we got? You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, you you want like a slow like. Do, 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 do. I okay, can't. This is, a, this is the ultimate tease. Like this. <laughs> I can't get a, a handle on this stupid camera. It's like the opposite thing happening. Anyway, let's pop this bad boy open. Um, how are we doing here, Ben? Help me out. Can wow. you see it yet? Is it is it fuzzy? Uh, how about this? We have a banner scrolling at the bottom. So just tell us. What <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, fantastic. I'm off the hook. This is cask 35.264, entitled Midnight Marmalade. Um, as Ben was talking about earlier, you do get a nice little insert here, um, along with what really matters, the beautiful bottle. Um, but yeah, and as you can probably tell, I popped this guy. I've been enjoying it here and there. Um, couldn't, couldn't wait for today. So... Um, Anyway, yeah, this is uh, this is a beautiful 33-year-old whiskey. Spent 31 years in um, in ex bourbon wood. Last two years in uh, first fill Oloroso hogshead. So, um, so distillery number 35. Sorry, go ahead. Do you mind showing the box as well? I mean, I, I did the box. Is oh, I'll show. Much I'll show the box. It's the yep. same as man. If you guys are familiar with the vault, this is. It's the same. Uh, yep. So here you have the side view with the little clasp that opens it. You have your tasting insert. That's the full tasting note, not just the abbreviated bottle note that you have on the label. And a, a bit of history on the back about the vaults collection, the society, and then matching decor and your front shot. This is the finest poplar wood sourced from various locations around the world. Um, 
So uh, yeah, we've uh, yeah, we've got a good box, but anyway, I'm not a box guy, Ben. I'm not yeah, a box guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more of a more of a bottle guy. Uh, so, I know I, this yeah. is feeling a bit like QVC, but uh, for a moment I just yeah. think <laughs> could be sick. we got we got to show the box with the scrolling ticker. There's all, this is, feels like yeah, an sure, sure. Show. But right. uh, um, but yeah, so it. this is uh this is um, midnight marmalade. And uh, distillery number 35 has really seen, uh, I think, a, I'm not sure about a resurgence, just really a, a surgence. Um, you know, for years, they were part of the Glenn Morangy group, and, and uh, they were kind of overshadowed by a couple of other uh, distilleries, uh, namely Numberly, uh, distillery number 125, and distillery number 33. Um, so uh, they didn't they didn't really get a lot of exposure. And uh, and since a different um, spirits company purchased the, the, the brand, um, it's, it's really taken off, especially in the U.S. And, and rightfully so. I mean, it's it's absolutely gorgeous spirit. I've had the pleasure of visiting the distillery um, when uh, when when Graham was still there right before he left, actually. Um, myself and uh, Matt Bailey from um, SMWS Australia. We popped by and, and got an amazing tour, tasted all these crazy samples out of like, you know, uh, out of glass bottles, out of uh, iced tea, like jugs, like all this crazy stuff. It was a really kind of like what I would call like a backdoor tour of, of the distillery and what they were doing and, and, and just a lot of fun. Um, the spirit itself is, you know, historically rather uh, grassy, floral, more of an aperitif style, um, but it ages remarkably well. And um, we've had a lot of examples, I think, of uh, distillery number 35s with, say, 20 plus years on the uh, on the maturation statement. And um, and they perform. They perform very, very well. I can even think of some members uh, who, who are really kind of peat heads and, uh, and, and absolutely adore this distillery as an unpeated example. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so, you know, a typically lighter bodied space side, uh, make, uh, that's spending extended amount of time in, in ex bourbon and then two years in this first fill Oloroso cask. So uh, I think a really nice combination of, of bright floral orchard fruit characters and, um, and then throw on that a couple of years of, of really beautiful sherry and you've got a hell of a dram. So yeah, it's, uh, you want to, you want to taste? What do you think? Well, yeah, but, are, are, but we, are we I at think, that point? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm way past that point. I, I'm more than ready, <laughs> but just before, but before we do Tom, I mean, just to reiterate everyone, I mean, you'll see in the, in the ticker going down, it's, it does say here, uh, first fill Oloroso hogs that I, I assume the bottle will specify that this was actually a double matured cask. It's been yes, for initial, years. Yeah. The initial cask is an ex bourbon hogshead, and final cask is a first fill ex Oloroso hogshead. 46.1% alcohol. Um, yeah, 33 years. Yeah. So I, I think I've become just more and more of a fan of the more delicate influence of sherry on an older whiskey to have sort of the balance of, of true classic urban wood maturation, allowing the spirit to sort of evolve as is without the heavy influence. And then just adding that sort of extra layer uh, yeah. from a fresh sherry cask at the end. Well, and I think we saw that, we saw a great example of that last time we sat down with the 125.77. That's right. Yeah. You know, that, that was, you know, that is, that was like a really uh, lovely um, uh, sherry character that wasn't too heavy handed. And allowed for for so much more of of that that core spirit to come through. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to get on this one. Let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's see how this compares. And, and really, I think that's I'm just just to share. That's what I'm sort of looking for when I see a cask on paper like this that spent time in both types of cask. How influential the sherry is? Does it retain the character beneath that? Is it overpowered? I, I don't expect it will be, but some you know out there can be. Well, it's got some great color to it. For sure, yeah. It's um, got a really nice, deep color. I'm rocking the old school society uh, tasting. Glass. Oh yeah, I just see. I just upgraded. Um, right, so I got my uh, I got my insignia here.
mm. right away. It's, it's just sort of like there's the depth of old warm leather and uh, sort of like a, a baked apple pie at the same time. So, so much going on right away, you know, just so evocative of an older whiskey. Oh, I'm getting like a Grand Meunier on vanilla icing, like a crepe Suzette type uh, situation. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, um, oh man, the, the balance. I love that balance between sort of just over ripened fruits and like the earth. You know, I said leather was my first, my first, uh, my first impression. I love the balance of earthiness and sweetness, kind of. Yeah. This is the duality yeah. of both. Yeah, I would imagine that leathery aspect, which I'm also certainly picking up. Not yeah. old, not new, medium worn leather, you know, but I would imagine that's coming a bit from the uh, from the uh, second cask. Yeah, I mean, to be specific, the, the, the leather shoes are 10 years old, but you take good care of them. So, you know, that's what you have. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. yeah. I wear sneakers every day. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like George Costanza, you know. <laughs> I, I am doing more on that with uh, as I get older, of course. <laughs> Typically, you know, and comfort is becoming more and more important in my life. Well, I, I left my you, I left my sweatsuit at home, so that's that's probably good. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, speaking of comfort, man, I, I this is just such an elegant, refined just aroma. I haven't even tasted it yet, but it just it's so it, it's elegant. It's I, I don't want to use this word; it's a bit cliche, but it evokes luxury. You know, you know. Again, I'm cautious with the usage of that word, but it's sort of a very luxurious feeling. It's it's very harmonious, and it's uh, it does I think make you want to sort of sit in a comfortable chair. Uh, in your space, like time. spiced Seville oranges, like nectarines. Oh, the, if they were if they were maybe like uh, cut up a nectarine and saute it in like brown butter or something. Oh, you know There's what? Quite a bit, quite a bit going on in here. Yeah, you, you said you said Grand Marnier at the beginning, and there's like an orange liqueur. No, oh, yeah, so definitely, in the, definitely I mean, in the background. I mean, you know, they 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 nail it with marmalade. I think uh, for sure. I mean, there there is a lot of that that kind of candied orange uh, touch of rind um, going on. So so yeah, I mean, they 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 pretty much nailed it there. Yeah, right. It's interesting that with a, a sherry cask, Oloroso sherry cask, you, you know, for the second term, you don't get, I'm not getting those more traditional notes of sort of red fruits and um, baking spices, you know, the classic, the classic notes you would derive, that would be derived from, from Oloroso sherry, the, the nuttiness. It's, it's more like a I mean, piece I, of the orange spice. I, I typically get red fruits more, and this is just my personal experience, Obviously, from a red wine cask, but also port casks. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't tend to get much red fruit from sherry, and this is Oloroso. So, you know, those those uh, grapes could have been fermented dry, or they could have been fermented with a, a ton of residual sugar. Um, we don't have that detail, but I might venture to guess that uh, this is a drier uh, Oloroso sherry. What I do typically get a lot with Oloroso additional maturations is a nuttiness and I'm not quite getting yeah. that yet. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that it might come out a bit with, with a bit more time in the glass. All right. Shall we uh, taste this bad yeah. boy? Slanja. Slanja, Ben. Oh man, the, um, the the it's the earthiness is just it's it's so well executed. More of that leather. I'm getting a little bit of pine needles. Oh, dry, dry, get, surprisingly dry. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost now. I'm getting that nuttiness that I just spoke about. Yeah. Maybe I stuck it in my mind or something. But I'm, but almost like a like a hazelnut brittle. Um, there's lots of of kind of spicy confection going on um i certainly get some some uh golden raisin some of that raisinated fruit that i think is indicative of of a, a sherry maturation 
Yeah, the nuttiness is, it sounds like we're having this, it's a very similar experience with the whiskey. The, the nuttiness is definitely there. It wasn't there on the aroma. It, it is more sort of classical sherry uh, in terms of in construct on the palate. But man, it's the texture is brilliant. I love, I love like a very velvety spirit. It's very lush. I think that just makes for a really long finish, you know. Well, that that seems to be, you know, a constant throughout these casks that we're tasting is, is just fantastic uh, texture. And I think here it's it's on another level for sure, even yeah. compared to the, a couple of the ones we had uh, last week, like the 24 and the 125. Oh, yeah. Um, you said I think you used the word brittle. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. Said, I think so, that, that that describes I think the my experience with yeah. the palate as well. So there's there's certainly an, a nuttiness there, but it's it's encapsulated by like you know beautiful sweet crunchy candy as well. Um, yeah, and and that that citrus carries through for sure. Um, maybe a little less intense on the palate than on the nose. It's it's very very I think um, mm. it's not in your face. It's it's so how do how do I articulate this? <laughs> it's full flavor. There's so much going on. It, it's a whiskey that I feel like you can spend a lot of time with and pick up new flavors and aromas over the you know over the course of thirty minutes with one ounce. If you spend thirty minutes with an ounce, I think you won't get bored. But it's not in your face. It, it, it's very sort of indicative of an older whiskey that requires a bit more. I think searching to 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 pick out everything. Yeah, yeah th there is there is a uh, a lot of flavor going on. There's a lot of texture going on, but it's it's all delivered with a very deft touch. That's that's how I would that's how I would uh, explain this. What, what's going on with this whiskey? Lovely, lovely stuff. Yeah, and I think that you know the the question that I posed before we tasted. Or at least to myself, was that you know will the sherry cast the, the, the final two years in sherry in sherry wood will that take away from I think the the, the true spirit beneath it will that overpower will that throw things off out, you know out of sync or, or out of balance and I don't think it has at all I, I think because and it, it's no. interesting because then on the, on the just nosing it we weren't getting a lot of that sort of heavy sherry influence but on the palate maybe more so the nuttiness is there there's a bit of hazelnut as you said. Uh, the spiciness is is a bit unique to what you would find with, with sherry. You typically get a lot of sort of Christmas baking spices with sherry, right? Maybe yeah. more of some, some more autumnal spices, and that that orange, like there's like an orange zest that you call that. I think, I think, which is is just spot on. I, yeah. get, I get a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say it's for me, it's an enhancement. It's not, it's not changing the character. I would assume in the uh, base. Okay, we didn't try the the spirit at 31 years after it came out of the bourbon cast and went into the sherry cast. But if we were just from experience tasting other spirits in this distillery of this age, I feel like the sherry, sort of the second term has only enhanced really what was there and, and I just, just more tapped. And that that is the approach of our of our cask management program. You know, I mean, we're, we're never looking to overpower or hide anything. I mean, you're looking to enhance the flavors. And, you know, that's that's what you and Campbell, our, our spirits manager in in Edinburgh, is is doing such an amazing job at is you know tasting these. He's the one that's tasting them at 31 years, and saying you know what, this is really good right now, but it's going to be on another level if we do this additional maturation. Um, so uh, yeah, so and that's sometimes why you see a a different you know oftentimes it's about two years, sometimes it's more, other times it's it's far less, and that's that's you and checking in on these casks and making sure that that the the flavors from the additional maturation aren't overpowering the you know the the core spirit that that was in that cask for so long um so you know it's it's highly monitored and and i think uh, consistently the the results are are really well done and uh thankfully our tasting panel agrees I mean, it's a bit of a risk too. You take a cask, you know, a spirit that's been a whiskey that's been aging for, you know, for and, over, yeah. over thirty years, and then you—it's—it's it's not like it's a ten-year-old whiskey, right? You know, that, that you can get quite easily, and, and then you're transferring it. It's, you're taking it something that, on its own, is probably going to make a lot of people very happy, and you're sort of rolling the dice and, and hoping that the second term is actually going to to do that to enhance the spirit and not take it away, which. Um, 
I can imagine for you and is 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 no easy decision. At, of course, point, yeah. You know. And and we're seeing a lot of you know we're seeing a lot of older whiskey, say twenty five years and above, in the same cask their entire life, you know, and and yeah. rightfully so. But here and there, you know, I mean, why not just go for it? And uh, certainly it, with this whiskey, it's paid off. Um, there are, I'm sure, a handful of others that you and I can think of where it, where it really paid off. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the next one does. But this uh, this whiskey is real nice. I, I just added some uh, some water. If I were just enjoying on my own, I probably wouldn't. But just for the, the sake of it, I mean, forty six point one percent is pretty much spot on for a, like, like a, a sort of common bottling strength. And uh, for me, I think it's just great as is. I, I've just added a few drops. Let's see how it evolves. Certainly softens uh, the spiciness a bit. It does bring on for me a little more uh, of the vanilla confection, um, a touch more fruitiness. Yeah. A bit more berry from fruitier for me overall. Those orchard fruits are, are sort of just cl climbing up to the surface. A bit, a bit mm -hmm. of berries. Lost a bit of that sort of uh, robust uh, red apple, you know, worn leather character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if I were uh, if I were doing this on my own, I probably wouldn't add any water. It, it is just perfectly beautiful, neat. So, but it's all. <laughs> Midnight but it's also marmalade. good with some water. It's also good with some oh, yeah, water. Too. It is, sure, oh. sure, for sure. But then it's, it gets down to you know professional tasting versus personal taste. That's all. Yeah. That, that's yeah. that's the differentiation there. Well, I, I've always enjoyed. I've always thought, at least, with with a bottle of cast strength whiskey. Obviously, you get more longevity out of it because you can pour smaller pours and add some water. So, from a value standpoint, this is you know, as a before I was even part of the team as a consumer, mm -hmm. I always cared about this. So you can add some water and then keep it going, but man, just need 46.1% spot on. Killer yeah. stuff, really yeah. nice. And um, I mean, as somebody who sold spirits and watched the evolution of these whiskey prices in Scotch and, and elsewhere, um, for a 33 year old whiskey with this kind of cask protocol um, to be at 595, I mean, that's, that's solid. I mean, that, that's a solid price point for something like this. So, I uh, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy about that as well. Yeah. So so that is the cast. And just to recap, it will be dropping in about thirty minutes time at one p.m. Eastern uh, at smwsa.com. And there seems to be some vacuuming going on in my office building. So I apologize if there's any noise uh, <laughs> that you can overhear from the sound of me uh, sl slushing whiskey in my mouth. So as we mentioned in the beginning, we do have one more we're going to sample here. Uh, again, this is one that has already been uh, made available to society members in the US at our site at swusa.com. And this is actually, I, I did taste this one briefly before this, and Tom, you've tasted this as well before. Right? Well, I, did, this is not your first I did the Rocky music. I did the Rocky music for the last one. So maybe we'll like, I don't know. Um, Oh, I do. so it's old, maybe not dinosaur old, but I'm just going to post the banner. So, there you go. <laughs> so the, the, the question from Jerry was, was how many vaults are dropping the 35 and the 35 is the one that's dropping at one o'clock. This is one um, that has been made available. It came out somewhat recently. It is on the shop right now available. It has 76.148. Grilled lemon garlic elk steak. Now that is a mouthful in terms of description. And we'll see uh, if that adds up. Okay, yep, there we go. Here we go, folks. For those of you who have not grabbed one yet. It's interesting because, you know, look, as you mentioned, Tom, neither of these whiskeys are, are inexpensive by any means, uh, I, I think. No. They're, they're, no. <laughs> let, let's let's just be honest about that. But I think it's it's always interesting because you look at this. These are two whiskeys, both from Space Side, both with a similar cast type, um, and both both close in age. But we had you know thirty two years and thirty three. Th thirty three was the one that we just had. This is thirty two years old, so very comparable. Obviously, different prices. Speaking to I think you know probably the business that we're in of acquiring cast and 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 just the, the market value there, perhaps, or maybe other factors. 
but it'll be interesting yeah. to see, you know. Well, two totally different distillates though, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so 35 is kind of this light floral aperitif type distillate, whereas 76 is, I mean, they, they call it the beast of Dufftown, right? I mean, yeah. this is a, a very complex uh, distillation process that very few people, except for Matt Hoffman at uh, Westland, have wrapped their head around. And uh, what it creates is an entirely robust spirit. It, it's the distillation, it's also um, uh, you, the use of the warm tubs as opposed to a classic shell and tube. Um, I should say worm, worm tubs are a lot early, a lot older. So uh, I guess those would be the, the, the classical uh, ways to uh, cool your spirit, cool the vapors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the worm tub, as we've mentioned in, in communications before, limits that copper conversation. What that means is there's just less opportunity for the vapors to interact with copper and, and uh, have the copper sort of glean off some of the heavier elements. So you're, you're typically left with a distillate that has a, a more robust feel um, at times. Uh, probably more so uh, in in uh, distilleries like this and like distillery number 48, where you have a almost a touch of uh, sulfur in the spirit in a good way. Um, you know, it's meaty, it's robust, it's intense. So off the still, these are completely different new make spirits, right? Um, so so there, you, you, we, we have an opportunity to see how these evolve under very similar parameters from that point forward. Uh, and, and how they end up in the glass. Um, but uh, similar, uh, fairly similar fermentations as well from a, a spec standpoint. Um, 35 is a bit shorter. Uh, there's a mix of short and long fermentations with 76. But uh, but yeah, so anyway, I, I've had this a few times. I shared this uh, with my wife. Um, she was absolutely blown away by it. I was absolutely uh, blown away by it. <laughs> my uh, my nose stuck in this glass the whole time you were talking. I've just been nosing. Oh, uh, yeah, gonna, uh, I think sort of. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna stop talking and uh, start sniffing. Yeah, it's certainly more floral, floral. Let's oh. see, aluminum, aluminum foil. Uh, certainly more floral. I think than the one we just had. A bit of sort of like a lavender, like a like a violet. There's Definitely like a wildflower element to it, which yeah, is interesting call. because that you, that's there, but but it, it is also, I would say, a bit more meaty uh, and robust overall. So it's kind of like you have well, both of the things going on, which I think offers a nice contrast. We're at five, like a five percentage point difference in, in alcohol. And so I feel that yeah. alcohol a bit more yeah. on the nose. And then that's going to like inform to me that it's going to be a pretty big, rich spicy palate. Um, we'll see how that goes. A few comments about the tar pit that has just arrived. Scotch says, I mean, it's good to see you. Just arrived the other day, great blend. Um, and uh, Michael Cohen says tar pit is delicious. Yeah, tar pit was quite good. That was uh, totally getting off topic here, uh, but uh, just glad to see you guys are enjoying that one. Oh, man. Going back to my comment about, you know, on paper, how similar these two casts could look. And then obviously you kind of shared more of the background to confirm they are very, very different. And, and man, they just smell very different. Mm. That is a mouthful. What great intensity. Oh. That is um so interesting. Mm. You know, I was getting a lot of like dried herbs on the on the palate on the on the nose rather, um, along with those 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 sort of wildflower violet kind of aspects you were talking about. That was spot on. Mouth, mouth um, feels mouth feels a bit more lush, a bit more there's a bit yeah. more texture to, to it. Again, not this is not taken away from what we just had. I'm just just to compare because we understand for mem society members and looking to if you're interested in picking one of these two, I think it's, we just want to share the, our our experience and, and sort of note the differences among them. But 
interestingly, 32 years old. I think if tasted blind, I would probably peg this as a quite a bit older. It really shows its age. I mean, I, every year of, of 32 is here, if not more. Um, and so it, how do I put this? I find that older spirits sometimes sort of break apart. Not, not break apart is probably, that's, that's not a good way to put it. But it sort of just delicately fall sort of along the sides of the palate. And I, lo I love that. It, it's like, just, yeah. it's something I pick up. It's, it's sort of a textural experience I have with older whiskeys. Uh, only with older whiskeys, and I think that's there. It, it feels very sort of light in, care, in, in body, but uh, but like really full in flavor. If that makes sense. You think this one feels light in body but full in flavor? Well, or are you talking about a different some some I'm, other? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go back. You know, because in nosing it, I thought, wow, this this the, the aroma is a bit more meatier. It's a bit more robust. There, it's it's obviously you're and you called out rightfully five and a half percentage point higher in ABV. And you you can get that right, but on the palate, I, th I think there's just a uh, I don't know. It, it's for me, it's a bit lighter. But but again, o only only just because both of these that we've had so far are, are similar in that they're both they're both there's both so much going on here. I mean, we're also spoiled by drinking basically like solely single cast spirits. Um, that are that are all cask strength so uh, uh you know 51 feels pretty smooth to me but there's still i mean there's still a lot uh, there there's tannic structure um there's certainly that that muscularity that intensity yeah. that's that's kind of gripping the sides of my palate but all on the core is very silky um a lot of nice confection um, and a lot of savory character. I mean, just like with the marmalade in, in the last one, I mean, grilled lemon, garlic, elk steak. I mean, I've had elk steak. I don't know how many folks have. Um, there's a certain gaminess to elk, to venison, to that sort of thing. And um, it's there. I mean, it's there in a in a very lovely way. Um, I'm, I'm getting that, that bit of citrus. I mean, I don't know if I'm sitting here reading the label and just... Uh, Allow, allowing these things to happen, but I'm but reading our, nothing, our tasting everything. What? <laughs> I said I'm, I'm our, reading absolutely you know, nothing. I'm just tasting this. Is, I mean, oh it, so it's like sometimes it's like wow, the the tasting panel has really like nailed this. Like they have really like put the finger on the pulse of this whiskey. So well, that's two two of, of them here. Yeah, on the top of your tasting panel, you know, it just just call out too that this, these two are also categorized in different flavor profiles. The first one we had was a deep, rich, and dried fruit flavor profile, which is typically a sign for. Um, I'm just getting to summarize. Generally, you'll find more sort of cast-driven spirits, heavy sherry, heavier sherry influence, or other type of wine influence. This is in the old and dignified profile, which is kind of for me of all the twelve flavor profiles, that's the one that's sort of up in there. It's typically old, but it can be in any sort of cask. Um, but I think that classification hints at what I'm tasting at least, is that the first one might even have more sherry influence or it, it can be identified in tasting as sherry. This is, is just another worldly spirit with so much going on that when I, I think I mentioned that the first one, you can probably spend 30 minutes with it and find something new every time. This, I think you can go a bit longer. You can spend an hour or two. And with oh, each yeah. one, oh, yeah. really, I, I think it, it's a bit more mysterious in, in Sort of attributing the flavors to, to, to which, whether the spirit or the cask, and I think from that standpoint, it's just like some mind. It's just mind blowing. Yeah, well, I mean, if it's if it's done well, you know, you have you have both of those aspects coming through, um, and uh, and here certainly you can you can tell where it's come from, and and the the sherry cask has certainly uh, enhanced the flavor w without dominating. I think a lot of the inherent qualities of the spirit that was in that ex-bourbon for, for 30 years. Such a, such a, honestly, it's such a privilege to just sip on this thing. You know, it's, it's not every day. And, and this is, this is what I would define. I mean, and, and you, you called out rightfully. So Tom, we're very fortunate to, to enjoy whiskeys like this all the, all the time. But even so with all these whiskeys behind us, I still reserve this type of, bottling or you said a whiskey for a special occasion like I, I feel almost guilty and enjoying this set every day uh, because it is such a rare spirit and it just they're harder and harder to come yeah. by you know so I, I would absolutely agree and uh you know there 
I mean, w whether they're seven years old or whether they're 25 or 30 years old, there is so much amazing spirit that you can pop open at any point and enjoy and share with someone and ha and watch them just be blown away by it, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I, I would agree that, uh, that I think twice before pulling out something like this for, uh, for someone who's over. Um, but, uh, but yeah, special stuff. I mean, it, it really is so much going on. Um, well, it's gaining, a it's gaining a lot of depth as it's just been sitting here in the glass for, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 minutes. You know, I'm just going to add some water to this and actually, you know, what? just to, uh, just to see how it changes here. I, I quite like it at 51, 51 and a half percent. Well, I'm going to add some whiskey and then add some water because I, <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> I kind of went a little low on that one as far Which as. Just the uh, same thing. I added too much water, so I had to add some whiskey back. Let's see where. No, I, I didn't add any water. I just drank it all neat. So, um, yeah, yeah, let me just do that. Well, okay, with a bit of water, you definitely. The, the spectrum of flavors, I think, is more, I, I think, identifiable. Like, you, you, you get more flavor, for sure, and a wider variety of flavors with a little bit of water. It definitely opens up the spirit. I'm now, you, it's easier to discern now the fruits and the spices and the leather quality and a bit of maltiness there, too, as well. But I think neat, this is pretty approachable. Again, it's our second whiskey, so we were a little bit warmed up. But I think at fifty-one percent, man, the, just the, the combination of, of of that sort of elegant profile with that intense delivery, I love that. I love the texture, you know. So, I, so neat is probably my preference for this, but that's just me. <laughs> prettier nose. It gets the, the nose gets prettier. You get still get the flowers, still get the herbs. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, again, going back to obviously the today's sort of, uh, you, you know, our session here, we, we had the, the first one, the 35.264, similar cask, similar spirit. I enjoy them both for different reasons, I think. You know, I think maybe the first one we had is, is probably, if I'm just going on a limb here and say, if you were going to share something with friends, you want to impress your friends or family, somebody comes over. It's probably, oh. it might be easier to, <laughs> you're, you're freaking out too. Dude, the palate is crazy. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, um, well, it is crazy, so but I was going to say. All of a sudden, it's like, it's like this beautiful, like spiced honey and, uh, oh. I think the first one wow. is funny because I, I said that wasn't in your face. And I think that was probably more in your face. And the, and the, the complexity is more on the surface of that one. This one, I think you have to go a, a bit deeper. And once you Ooh. do, I think you're really rewarded. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. I'm starting to sweat. Uh-oh. Uh, this is real good. Yeah. I saw one. Uh, I saw a chat uh, or, or a, a comment here by Cros Crosbionics. Crosbionics. Yeah. What would Ben, Tom, and Jenna pick between these two casks if there could only be one? Well, that's kind of what I was trying to get at is I think, man, I, you can say these are so similar in that they're both. 30 plus year old space side whiskeys that have spent some time in a sherry cask. But I think they are also different. The, the first one, 35264, that we just had, Midnight Marmalade, that to me, you know, again, my, my opinion here is that was like a late night dessert dram. This is a bit more delicate, and I probably wouldn't, I don't know, maybe, again, my personal opinion here. This is a bit, there's more not more going on, but it's just to, to actually enjoy the spirit and all the variety of flavors. I think I would want a cleaner palate. I wouldn't want it after dinner. I'd probably want it sometimes just on its own. So they're different. I think <laughs> both, I think both, I think both are equally complex. That's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah. Um, I think both are equally complex, but on different platforms of intensity. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's much more of a delicacy um, of, an, of a nuance with 35.264, while, yes, next to each other in this comparative tasting that it's turned into, the, the sherry influence might be a little stronger in the 35. Um, it still doesn't take away from, from that delicacy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, situationally, it, it is... It, 
let's let's think here. If it were me, okay. So um, for this seventy six point one four eight, I could imagine more of of like sitting by the fire after like uh, fishing all day and having a nice like warming dram of that versus this thirty five point two six four. I might actually pair it with the dessert. I might. The first one? 35.264? Yeah, the first one. I might actually pair I, it with I agree. dessert. I agree. Um, I agree. I, I think it would stand up to anything from like a, a, a like a Valrona cake to a, you know something I mentioned in the nose. I think Crepe Suzette or Crepes, Crepes Flambe in general would be a fantastic pairing for that uh, for, for that whiskey. Um, but uh, but yeah, something like kind of outdoorsy and intense for the for the Mortlock. And uh, ooh, excuse me. Oh wow, I just totally uh, said that. Well, well, first of all, sorry guys. I need I need to I need to up my dessert game. I have no idea what any of those things you just mentioned was, but but I think I'm gonna go you know out and crepe, roll. You know what crepes are, right? I do know what a crepe is. Yeah. Right. So so you roll you roll the crepe up tight. You make the crepes, which is not an easy feat. You roll them up very tightly and you line them up. Um, then you, uh, you know, there's a bit of butter in the pan. You drizzle Grand Meunier over the whole thing. So that's the alcohol, the, 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 basically the fire starter, if you will. And then you hit a match to it and it, like it all goes up in a big blue flame Then you toss it around and the flames go out eventually. And you have this lightly caramelized, um, you know, crepe dish with some Grand Meunier and, and butter. And, uh, it's pretty remarkable. If you can pull it off without starting a house fire, it's a nice party trick. Um, I leave it to my to my other friends to do that. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it, it's really tasty. So kind of citrus oriented with um, with a good amount of buttery goodness and and sweetness yeah. from the crepe. So yeah, I, I feel like we're you know we're we're being really specific because we have both of us in front of us, both whiskeys in front of us right now. But but truthfully, I mean, I think. If you like one, you'll like the other. You, you know what I mean? If if they're drawn to this type of, of, of whiskey, I think they're they are similar. They can probably be replaced. You can't swap one you know, them back and forth, depending on the circumstance. But I agree with you, a hundred percent on this. And what and what a life to be to have both of these and actually go ahead and do that. I'm going to pair this. I think with with the dessert thirty five point two six four, and then. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Or yeah. you know, I mean, if if uh, <laughs> if you can do it, just grab them both and do the thirty-five first, the seventy-six second, and you are going to uh, uh, go to bed a very very happy person. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're both very exceptional, and you know, like a lot of our other whiskeys, they have their own personality, and they're very different personalities. Um, both both benefiting greatly from this uh, this additional maturation, so yeah, that well, yeah. this is pretty fun, man. This is a this is a good duo. Uh, I, I think we're giving everyone the impression that this is what our what our jobs are actually like all the time. When really, this is kind of well, a rare. This is a equally well, rare. Now that, I, now, now that I have a nice buzz, I got to go like uh, balance a budget and things like that. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> well, no, well, most importantly, everyone. I mean, in ten minutes time, uh, cast thirty five point two six four will be dropping the midnight marmalade, the first one that we tasted in the session. Uh, once we end, if if you missed the, the, the beginning, go ahead. This will be reposted in just in a moment. Uh, you can watch the replay as well. So that will be available. Uh, and how many bottles do, do we have here allocated for the U.S. members in total? For uh, for for thirty five point two six four, yeah. uh, 80, 84 bottles were allocated. All right, so for only the US. only eighty four for the U.S. So pretty small number. Yep. Uh, although although pretty much in line with I think most of our casts, you know, we we every, everything yeah. has been single cast and shared with other markets, other countries. It's it's a bit on the more robust side for uh, for vaults collections um but but uh but still you know i mean 84 bottles will go quicker than you think so yeah. you know but as with everything else i mean one thing is extinguished and another cask is released so it's just yeah. kind of the 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 journey that we're all on together and kind of the the, the inventory changing over and, and presenting new new opportunities throughout the year so yeah well, anyway, thank you all for for tuning in, and I would say, you know, good luck to everybody ordering a bottle. Although I think I think there are enough going to go around this with this one. 
uh, in about nine minutes time. Uh, if you're interested, you know, hit us up, shoot an email at info at smwsa.com or just comment below and, and we'll get to your questions about this. Otherwise, Tom, any, any closing remarks about the whiskey, about anything? Um, wow. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, both of these were amazing. Um, really nice to taste with you, Ben, as always. I, like I, I love your yeah. insights. And um, and thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, th this is a this is a real pleasure for me, and certainly the probably the best part of our job, uh, barring in person events when we get to do this and actually shake hands with someone else. Yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, so I appreciate the opportunity as always, and and I think uh, I can speak for the whole team where uh, when I say that uh, we look forward to in, to doing a lot more of these in the next few months, you know, with a lot more consistency. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All right. Thanks so, everyone. Enjoy thanks, everyone. and, uh, happy hunting. Cheers.